Okay. Uh, um, if you want to compare the male to the female or two groups of people on a particular test, like our test, and these are the grades, what formula would you use to compare the two of them? We never learned correlation, so I'm not sure why would you, you would say that. I'm not looking for the good correlation would show. First, you can't do a correlation here because you can do a correlation. You have to have the pairs of numbers lined up. But this, this male and this female don't know about each other. It could be in two different classes. How, 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 how do, how do, what, what formula would we learn about? And again, what? Very good. OK, now, I can't, I can't do three things at the same time. Help yourself. I'll take one of them. OK, okay. so um, the answer is chapter 10, which is comparing one group to another group, in this case, males to females. You would plug it in versus the H1. Let's assume we have no particular direction involved. We do it like that. And we'd plug it into the formula x bar 1 minus x bar 2 over that big square root of you know n1 minus 1 times. I'm not going to write out the whole long formula. But then, of course, you move on to step number three. Just remind those of you who messed up the test for the last question. You go a T diagram. You put a zero here. Since we have it on both sides, we chop the alpha in half. We make the reject region on the left side and the right side. I'm doing this really as a kind of a brief review. You label the middle part, do not reject a zero. Uh, you look up the degree of freedom of n1 plus n2 minus 2. And finally, you'd get a number here, and you compare it to the boundary that you looked up on the t-table, and you either say accept or reject uh, H0, and you come to your conclusion. That's how you would do it if you had two groups of numbers and you knew chapter 10. That's great. The question we're going to be moving on to in chapter 11 is, what if you have three groups of numbers? What if you have, instead of comparing males to females, what if you want to compare, let's say, um, black students to white students to Asian students, and you have another grade here, you have like an 85, and a, a 90, and a 49, and a 53, and a 76. So you have five of those guys, and you want to have a comparison. So that's the question we're going to try to work out today. How would somebody do that? It turns out there's a logical extension of chapter 10 that sort of works, but does not really gives you to, has problems. Then we're going to end up with a totally new approach that really embodies chapter 11, called the, the name of the chapter is an analysis of variance. And by the way, you might as well get used to it. ANOVA is how it's pronounced, but analysis of variance. OK, anybody want to suggest, so how, you, how would you solve the problem? First of all, how would you extend the, the, the eight zeros? How would you extend the hypotheses to make it now relevant for three groups? Well, again, this is, a lot of people call it M. And in fact, in Greek, no, no, it's, it's, it's an M sound. Well, it's a mu, but it's really a mu. It's a, like, it looks more like a U. It looks like an M and a U sort of mixed together. I just want to correct it, it's, but it's a mu symbol. So you want to make it mu3. So that part is right. And do you have your name out? OK, Joe, you one of those people, one of those? Oh, you're going back. I'll pass it back to Joe, please. OK, um, so Joe is correct about adding that. Now the question is, what about the H1? And this turns out to be quite subtle and quite you know, easy to make a mistake on. And uh, how would you change the H1 to make it relevant for uh, a new height? Now, now we're dealing, basically, we're dealing with three groups instead of two groups. Remember, chapter 9 was one group. Chapter 10 was two groups. And chapter 11, it's going to be three, four, five, six. I mean, we're not going to have a separate chapter for every uh, chapter. Once you go beyond two, the same formula applies to all of them. But chapter 10 and 11, I'm saying, involves three or more groups. So we'll start out with a simple example of three. Aljo, how would yes? So a lot of people would put down not equal to mu3. OK, no name. Oh, there you no name. OK, self-service, huh? OK, well, that, that turns out to be wrong. I mean, I told you I mean, that's the obvious answer, but it turns out to be wrong. And now the question is, why is it wrong, and how can you improve it? Yes, Paul. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very that's very good. Because what's the remember what's what's the what's the H1? The H1 is the opposite of A0. How would you prove the A0 is wrong? If mu1 and mu2 are both the same, but the mu3 is different, does that disprove the A0? As long as there's one difference any place along the line, 
you're going to end up with a, you know, reject a zero. So remember, the opposite of saying they're all the same is not saying they're all different, but saying at least one of them is different. Not that they all, have, you don't have all three of them different. If these turn out to be the same, <coughs> it's so much easier with a, with a, with a, with a wireless, right? <laughs> okay, yes. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me just finish it then. So, so, so the truth of the matter is, you can say that the correct answer is that the mu1 may be different than the mu2. That, by the way, right away contradicts the A0. Or the mu1 is not the same as the mu3. Or the mu2 is not the same as the mu3, because there's only three of them here. So if any one of these three, three things turn out to be true, that disproves the A0. So one way of setting it up is saying it like we just did it here. That's, perfect. that's, that's fine for. That's fine, but it turns out that <coughs> you can abbreviate that. It's like a kind of a, a shortcut that turns out to be fine, is you simply say for the H1, where can we put that? We'll put it here. The H1, H0 not true. In other words, you just simply make the statement that the H0 is the opposite of the A0, the H1 is the opposite of the A0, and you leave it to the reader to realize that that means, but I'm saying, you write it this way, you, I mark it right on the test, but this is really what you're proving, trying to, that one versus the two is not the same, or maybe one versus three is not the same. If any of those three things turn out to be true, then you end up with disproving the A0. And someone had a question a second ago? Yes. Yeah, all three of them. I mean, in other words, it's one or the other. If, any, if all three are true, then for sure the A0 is not true. But if any one of them is true, then also the A0 means that they're all perfectly the same. Okay, so I want to place it back down, please. Okay, now, so now the question is, now that we understand the hypotheses, what will be the second step? How would you actually do the, cal what calculation could you do? Someone else be besides Kelvin first? Okay, Kelvin. No, no, but what, what, would you, what formula that we learned about already could you think might be the right formula to use? Okay, well, let me, let me just, instead of, see, first, it, it, it turns out that, it turns out that it's, not, it's not the same, well, the answer that I was expecting to get from a lot of people, or not expecting, but people should have given me, is that all you gotta do is do the t-test three times in a row. First, you compare the first column of numbers to the second column. How do you do it? By plugging into this T formula, look up a degree of freedom, blah, 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 and you get an answer. If it turns out we accept A0 comparing the first group to the second group, just remember this is, you know, this is black. Okay, if you're comparing the three groups, if it turns out that you prove that group one equals group two, what do you do? You say, that's great. Not proved so far, so good. Then you're going to compare the first group to the third group. How do you do that? You plug it into the T formula, and you get an answer. What if it turns out you, again, you accept A0? You continue going. You say, well, how about the second group to the third group? Again, you, you have comparing two groups, two columns of numbers, the chapter 11 formula without any changes would be a, great, a good thing to do. And then basically, so if you end up, I accept A0, I accept A0, I accept A0, three times in a row, what would you conclude? Is the A0 true or the H1 is true? Obviously, the A0 is true. Now, what if it turns out somewhere along the line, it's a group number th one, group number three happen to be different, and you reject the A0, what would you conclude then? Is the A0 right, or is the H1 right? Obviously, the H1 is right. So, so you could use chapter 10 three times in a row, and if you accept, and you accept, and you accept, and you've accepted the A0. So the question is, if that's the case, why do we have to learn chapter 11? So it turns out there's some, there are two things wrong with it, really one thing, but I'll let you say, break it into two things. Wrong with that approach that I think Kelvin was trying to push a second ago. Are you going to say the same thing? You were going to say something a minute ago. No, no, you simply change, keep, you know, each time you do this, unless you want to compare group one to group three, you take this column of numbers, which has this and that. Remember, the, this plus this minus two is a degree of freedom. So that, that we, we do it exactly the same way as chapter 10. So can somebody tell me, it really is a very subtle reason, why we can't do it, why, why can't we use now? Before we, I told the class something which very valuable when we talked about the Spinner Project. Again, I, I tell you certain things during the term that are more valuable than the statistics that I teach you. And what I'm about to tell you is repeating something I told you before, which is quite valuable. When you want to think about a problem, to really understand it, very often, but not always, of course, think of the extreme case. 
Like imagine if it's the same thing but a lot of numbers 